Do you continue to spin your wheels in the mud as an entrepreneur, as a real estate person, and as a salesperson? If so, if you can't get ahead, your production is stagnant, you're not making more money, you're making less money, then this is the video for you. What's up, guys? Uh, BC here. I wanted to kind of cover the building blocks, the foundation for building a real estate business in 2023, 2024, moving forward. Uh, this may turn into a series where I give like 100 or 200 points, but I wanted really to get back to basics because people still are missing this. We live in an era where you're bombarded with a bunch of bullshit. Sad to see. People are lost. People um, are, are doing things that have nothing to do with building a legitimate business. They think that any information that's pre like 2020 or 2019 suddenly doesn't apply anymore. I understand we have a new generation of younger people coming in who don't understand old school traditional stuff. And even really the the reality of the new school stuff, right? Um, it, it's just nuts. So I wanted to get down to the basics and give you something that I know will work. This is mindset. This is tools, techniques and foundational principles for your business. Okay, seven things. And we'll do a series more than likely. Number one is build a long-term foundation. This is what I mean. We're so caught up in, I need the deal now, and oh my God, and we're so worried about us putting our own interests first instead of the clients that we serve that it clouds your judgment and you don't build your business right, right? Building your database having your systems in place, making sure that you have a solid business plan, a daily schedule that you actually follow 80, 90% of the time and doing the activities that you need to do day in and day out is most important because long term, that's how you grow a business. Newsflash, ladies and gentlemen, you don't build a business like this. You don't blow up on Instagram and suddenly you're a billionaire. That's bullshit. That's a pipe dream, right? I have still, even after being shunned for three or four years in deep, I still have the biggest social media following in our niche pretty much right? And I've been shunned. Do you see me here trying to sell you gimmicks on how to grow your social media and all that stuff? No, because I built my business the right way. I built all my businesses the right way. And I'm, I'm emphasizing this point because you need to build a long-term foundation. What do most agents do in entrepreneurs? They run to the quickest thing. They want to skip the process. And what's going to get me a quick deal, quick deal, quick deal. And then you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off instead of building your business the right way. Focus on building a long-term foundation. A lot of that stuff is the basics put into place. You follow it day in and day out, and you show up every day to work on your business. That's it. That's a long-term foundation. Not getting caught up in the emotion of the moment, not worrying about one lead who got away and all that stuff. You do your job, okay? Number two is connections equals contracts. Write that down. Connections equals contracts. And whatever point stands out the most to you, leave a comment below, okay? Connections equals contracts, meaning I'm not just making contacts and talking to people. I'm looking to make connections with people. This equals me getting their contact information, even if they're not a lead. This leads to me facilitating them giving me a thumbs up that yes, they're going to do something. And then we, we make a connection. And now there's a professional connection established, setting up an appointment, right? Getting permission from them to follow up with them, right? Even if they're not ready right now, but they're going to be ready in the near future. That comes from the connection. The deeper conversation comes from the connection. The qualification comes from the connection, right? Them giving you the thumbs up to continue following up with them comes from the connection. Them remembering you when you call them back and contact them again comes from the connection, right? And connection isn't this fancy thing. It's getting into rapport, asking good questions, and building a skill set where you can communicate openly with the world and connect with anybody. That takes time, that takes coaching, that takes a lot of effort, and that takes you getting your ass kicked for a long time to get good. That's how you build the skill to do that, where you can instantly connect. So if I, if I said that to you guys, what price would you put on it? And leave a comment below. If I could just snap my fingers and like put all my skill into you and you could connect with anybody, no lead would slip through your fingers, you'd be able to set appointments like crazy. What would you pay for that? What would that be worth to you? Like genuinely, because for most people, if you're really honest, that's priceless, dude, because I can make you millions of dollars. You couldn't put a price on that, you see? But we get farther and farther away from it because everything we go for unconsciously, meaning, uh, right, is getting away from building the skill because you know you have to get out of your comfort zone and you know it's not easy and you know you're going to have to go through the phase of getting your ass kicked and not being good. But if you're not willing to do it, even if I, let's say, gave you leads, how are you going to close them? How are you going to connect with them if you don't have the skill? I mean, there's guys, there's no way around it. Even if they like you, if your skills are terrible, 
they're not going to trust you. Connections equals contracts. How do you build more connection? By being a more skilled communicator. Building relationships, right? Professional relationships, let's be clear. And selling go hand in hand. The better salesperson you are, the more skills you have, the easier it is for you to build relationships with people. I'm a prime example of it. Those aren't separate things. Those aren't separate things, okay? Number three, put aside 15 to 20% of every penny that you earn in your commissions. Now I get it, guys. When you get that first check, you're hungry, you have a lot of debt, I get it. It takes a lot of discipline, but we have to put the proper financial practices into place immediately. Put aside 15 to 20% of everything you get. So if you get that $10,000 check, 1,500 to 2,000 gets put in a separate account, away where you're not gonna touch. Because later on, you're gonna invest that back into your business, yourself, hire employees, get coaching, right? And get the right systems, get the new softwares and all the stuff that you need to do. But you need to put aside and have the discipline to put aside 15, 20%. Where does that come from? A long-term vision and foundation. Because we've planned out where that money's gonna go. You see, when you come work with me, this is what we do. We craft a plan for the future, six months, 12 months, two years, three years, five years. So every step of the way, you know exactly what's gonna happen. You need to do that, okay? That's number three. Number four, prioritize, and this is part of that previous point, prioritize where your investments are gonna go. Meaning, when you start, even now, even before you start making a lot of money, but especially when you start getting those commission checks, where are you gonna invest your money? Softwares, systems, coaching, right? Reinvesting into building multiple streams of income later, right? I don't know what you wanna do. Better wardrobe for yourself, right? New car, I don't know, right? But you need to have a list and know where that money's gonna go before you make it and while you're making it. And a lot of people are kinda like, well, when I get there, I'll get there. No, if that's your thought process, you're never gonna get there, right? You're, because you're not clear, you're not specific, and you don't even know. Does that sound like somebody who's gonna be successful? Well, when I get there, I'll figure it out. No. The, the successful people do it now and they plan ahead and they know exactly where they're going. So when you prioritize where you're gonna invest and reinvest your funds back into your business and yourself, it becomes very easy for you to also now have more motivation and drive to say, man, once I make that 10,000, I get to do this and that and this and that, right? But we need to be clear and think ahead. These are some of the building blocks of having a legitimate business, guys. Same thing with tracking your numbers. I still talk to 99% of agents who won't track their numbers, and I've been saying that shit for 10 years. What are you doing? But those are the same people that'll tell me, I don't need your help, bro. I'll figure it out on my own. Really? Then why is the failure rate in the industry over 90% if you're going to figure it out on your own? That's just your ego talking, right? That's number four. Number five, stop scouring the internet for more information. Oh, my God. Ask yourself this, right? And you can leave a comment below if you're open to it. How much time are you spending scouring the information or the internet for information instead of working? Because when I go back, especially to the beginning phases of me building my business, I didn't have time to scour the internet because I was working the vast majority of the day. Maybe late at night, very late at night, I could do some additional like reading or outside of my schedule. Because early in the morning I had my routine, I'd read, I'd get ready, then I'd work all day, right? Like I didn't have time to scour, like what are you guys doing? If you have a lot of time to scour the internet and watch YouTube and podcasts like a lot, you're not working enough. You're not building your business. You're not getting more connections that equal contracts. You're not talking to people. You're not engaging and working in your business. You're not working. You're not talking to people because that's the lifeblood of sales and entrepreneurship and real estate is talking to people. Because un unless you're Coca-Cola and some of these big brands that spend billions in advertising so everybody knows you because your face is everywhere, your advertising is you talking to people, period. You making a social media post and getting five views that your mom, your dad, and your sister see, that's not advertising, right? That's passive marketing that will take you years. Active marketing is what I'm talking about, getting out there and talking to people. Phone, doors, open houses, talking to people in public, you know, engaging with other human beings, right? Do that instead of scouring, because again, we default, and this is why, right? This is why I'm bringing it up, guys. We default to that because we think we're doing something good. You're not. That's just busy work. It's not doing anything for you. Now, I know, I, and I get it, guys, because especially if some of you are newer, a lot of this stuff can seem like I'm coming off harsh to people. I'm not. I'm just giving you the cold, hard truth. And many, like, if you ever listen to my stuff and you get triggered, take that as a positive thing because I'm, I'm poking at something that maybe you're trying to hide or you refuse to address. 
Because I get it. Whenever people confront us with the truth or say something that makes us uncomfortable, typically it's because we're hiding something or we want to deny it, right? And again, we've all been there. Every, everybody's been there where we've been neglecting something or not paying attention to something. So take it as that because some people will try to attack me or, or write nasty comments and that doesn't do anything. That further entrenches you in that position of wanting to defend something that really is indefensible, right? Number six, shortcuts don't exist. Those of you who follow me who are dancing on TikTok and looking for all these these easy hack ways to get business, it's not going to work. Like how much time are you guys going to waste? How much heartache are you going to go through? How much are you going to keep running away from me and people giving you the truth and telling you the truth and wanting to help you? Yet you say, no, I can figure it out on my own. And then you, you try these bullshit gimmicks. Do you, do you guys really think? I mean, again, I'm the one with one of the biggest social medias. I can, I, I teach you that and I can teach you that, but I push that to the side and I make people build a proper foundation because I know the social media is not the answer. Could I make a shit ton of money just selling social media? Of course. But what is that going to do for the end user? We need to build it properly. Then we introduce those things. Shortcuts don't exist. Repeat that after me. Type it in the comment. Get it tattooed on you. Shortcuts don't exist. And many of you, I think, will scour the internet looking for information to find the shortcut instead of just working with what you know works. All the stuff that I teach works. And I I remember uh, people writing stuff like when I run some of my small scale ads that I barely put any money on, right? Oh, well, that doesn't work in my market. Bullshit, dude. You don't work. Everything that I teach works nationally, internationally. I have students worldwide in my coaching. Australia, France, Europe, United States, Canada everywhere and my techniques work all the stuff that i teach works that's a story that people say because they want a shortcut and they don't want to do the hard work right lastly be congruent and and this is a big one number seven be congruent what do i mean by be congruent well let's look at this agent comes in doesn't want to put any money into their business they don't want to get coaching system software nothing i've figured out on my own i don't need to spend any money yet they'll get mad and push a client and say, no, pay me 6%. I'm worth a $30,000 commission. And they'll push to get an investment from somebody and ask them and force them to pay them money. Yet they themselves won't do it. Incongruent, right? Decisiveness. A lot of agents are extremely indecisive with everything and then get mad at a client when they're indecisive. Well, dude, you're not decisive. Why would you get mad at them? You're incongruent. You're totally incongruent. Agents get mad when a client's price shop, what's your commission and what are the fees? And and you're like, what the hell, man? That's all you're asking me? Yet, what do agents do when they're shopping brokerages? What's the split? What's the fee? You embody the same behavior. So what I'm getting at here, guys, is the same expectation you have from a client, you damn well better display and live yourself before you demand it on somebody else. This is why as a salesperson, this is one of the deep rooted secrets, by the way, one of many that make you more effective as a salesperson. When you're congruent, you have more conviction when you speak. You deliver everything that you say with a a little extra level of umph because you are congruent and you can't hide this, you can't fake this. This is why I can be that much more convincing and sell better than a lot of people is this is one of the many reasons is I'm congruent. When I ask somebody to invest and pay me the six or 7% that I charge, dude, I invest a ton into myself and coaching and all that other stuff. So I have no problem investing and extending the dollar for myself. Why would I have any hesitation in asking them to invest it in me for the service that I'm going to give them? Same thing with decisiveness. I'm extremely decisive. Look, I just cut my hair after three years. No problem. That's one of many things. When I choose what I'm going to eat, I choose. I move. I am decisive. So when I expect decisiveness from a client, I display it myself. That's why when I ask for it, they grant it to me easier than they do with other people. Why? They can feel the other person is indecisive. They could tell in their voice how they move, how they operate their business, right? So these are just seven... um, kind of things that I wanted to go over with you guys. Really simple stuff. I'm going to keep adding to this series more than likely and keep doing these things because a lot of the stuff, you know, is is not new. It's not revolutionary, but people need to hear it. And especially now because I'm so suppressed, I need to beat people over the head with it because they hear the opposite from so many people. At least it seems that way to me because of the resistance that I see and the, some of the questions and, and comments that I get from people. It's sad. It really just disappoints me. And sometimes I get a little bit upset because I want to help people, but they refuse to accept the help. And it just blows my mind. But I'll never, ever give up.
because I enjoy doing social media and I'm here to serve and I will never stop doing it. Okay. That's it for this one, guys. If you need any help, go to BrianCasala.com and get the help that you need. Otherwise, if you're looking to partner with me at Real Brokerage, um, I have 106 people now on my network and it's thriving. Schedule a call with the link below. Other than that, peace. We'll see you on the next one.